What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here. A very exciting day for Apple today. They announced the new iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, as well as the new iPhone 10 10th anniversary edition. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys a very in-depth look at these devices, how they compare to one another. If you guys were on the fence about whether or not it's worth 300 or 400 extra dollars to go for the iPhone 10, and in which way it's better, which way it's worse, I'd like to cover all of that in this video, give you guys a better idea about which device is better suited for you. So we're gonna be covering everything from software features to hardware and everything in between. So let's get to it. Which device is better suited for you? Now I'd like to start with what is the same with these devices? Because that list is smaller than what's different. So the build, the, from the outside, these are pretty strikingly different. I mean, one is much bigger than the other. This one fits in the palm of your hand. This one doesn't. I mean, not so comfortably anyways to use with one hand. This is definitely a one-handed operational device, more or less so than the iPhone Plus series. I mean, this is pretty Pretty close in size to the iPhone 8 now. They both feature a very similar design with glass on the front and back, and the actual type of glass is the same on both the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus series as it is 50% harder than the standard glass on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So that's good in terms of durability. As far as displays go, these guys do have the same technologies when it comes to displays in terms of true tone. So they will both adjust the ambience of the display to the current color temperature in the room, giving it a more even look. Also, they are both capable of the same brightness. So even though this one is an organic LED display, it is still capable of about 625 nits, the same as the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. And I was actually wrong about this in my original video. Both of these devices are still using IP67 water resistance. So that means three feet for 30 minutes, not longer. I said IP68 and that is just not true. So both are splash resistant, but definitely don't take them in the pool expecting them to survive. Now the processing power across all three of these devices is the same. So you're gonna get the Apple A11 chip with the neural engine and A11 motion coprocessor on all three devices. So they'll all be just as powerful as each other, although it's not confirmed the iPhone 8 though will be getting a gigabyte less of RAM compared to the 8 Plus and iPhone 10. Now all of the cameras are 12 megapixel although only the 8 Plus and the iPhone 10 will be getting the portrait mode so using an improved version of the existing one you're going to get that bokeh effect in some certain locations and pictures that you decide to use that on. All of the devices do have the improved flash unit with a two times better uniformity when taking pictures in the dark with that flash so that's good. Both the iPhone 8 Plus and iPhone 10 do have the new portrait lighting mode which is in beta and surprisingly all of the devices can do the 4k 60 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second now on the front of the device all three cameras do have the same 7 megapixel sensor although the iphone 8 can do the portrait mode on the front and the end emojis which we'll get into in just a second which the others cannot all of the devices do have the 64 and 256 gigabyte storage capacity and all of them do have the qi wireless standard for wireless charging and all of them do you have fast charging. So that's 30 minutes will give you about 50% battery life. That's pretty good for an iPhone. So that is where the similarities end. I decided to do what's the same so you guys get a general idea of where they stand. But how are they different? The most obvious one is going to be the display, the overall form factor of the devices. Before I get into that though, the borders are different. This one is stainless steel. It's going to be a tougher metal. It will resist drops a little bit better. As you know, with an aluminum device, when you drop it onto concrete, you get this gouge. It's a very soft, little softer metal than stainless steel, but aluminum 7000 is pretty durable. It's just if you drop it from pretty high up, you'll get a dent, you'll get a gouge. The colors are also different. On the iPhone 8 Plus, you're going to get the silver, the space gray, and the new gold color. Although in this one, it does not have a gold color. So you only get a silver and space gray option. So comfort wise, these are going to be in a different class. The Plus series is not so simple to use with one hand. You, you really got to stretch, and that's why it has reachability. On this guy, it's a it's a lot easier to use with one hand. The iPhone 8 is comparable in terms of screen size, although this one is just a little bit wider by a few millimeters. This one does not have reach ability. Instead, you have to go all the way up in order to bring down your notification center and control center. So on the left, if you swipe notification center, on the right, this control center on the actual display. On this guy, it's just a one swipe to get to the cover sheet or notification center as we used to know it in iOS 10. The iPhone 10 will be the thickest of the bunch at 7.7 millimeters, the iPhone 8 Plus at 7.5, and the iPhone 7 at 7.3. Not a very big or bad difference, but Apple has made these devices just a little bit thicker to accommodate 
accommodate more internals, more battery life. So back to the displays. Obviously on this one, you get a full bezel-less experience, top to bottom, edge to edge displays with a cutout for the top sensor bar. On the 8 Plus, it's a more conventional square, so nothing too exotic. But the actual display technology is different. You get organic LED display on the iPhone 10, which means an infinite contrast ratio. The blacks are pure black as each pixel can be turned off individually. It's a really impressive screen technology. Colors are gonna be a little bit more vibrant. In general, it's just a better display all around. Not to mention the PPI or the sharpness of the display is considerably better. You've got a 458 pixels per inch density on the 10, a 401 on the 8 Plus, and a 326 on the standard iPhone 8. So front facing cameras both are seven megapixels although this one is a face id capable device meaning it can scan your face a 3d map model of your face can be made and you can do different things with them such as unlock your phone with face id pay for certain things with face id or even do an emojis a new cool little fun trick that the iphone 10 has animate your own emojis using your face. This guy is not capable of that. That means it will not be getting portrait mode either in order to take those cool portrait mode effects using your face. Now, as far as cameras go, the iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 8, and iPhone 10 all share 12 megapixel sensors. But between the 8 Plus and the iPhone 10, there are several key differences. For one, this thing has a lower aperture on its telephoto zoom lens. That means you're gonna get a better picture, better quality in low light. This one also does have dual optical image stabilized sensors. That means as soon as you zoom in in a video or a photo, that image will be stabilized, where on this one, that's not the case. It's a lot more juddery. So if you do a lot of zooming, a lot of moving during that zooming, this one is going to be the better choice for you. And a couple of other things. So the whole face ID versus touch ID thing. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have second generation Touch ID, so same as the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Extremely fast, very convenient. You don't have to be looking at your phone to unlock it every single time. Just from the stage demo where Face ID was used to unlock the iPhone 10, it seemed a little bit slow. You had to be looking directly at the iPhone in order for it to be unlocked. So convenience-wise, it seems like there's a little hindrance there already. If you're used to the completely free, no boundaries Touch ID system where you can go ahead and unlock your phone while it's in your pockets without looking at it, that's definitely Definitely going to be more of a convenience factor there. I'm sure Face ID will improve with time, but right now it just seems a little bit slower than Touch ID, a little bit less convenient. And actually in the video demo, the video was cropped. Your games will be cropped. The sensor bar literally obstructs a portion of your content, whether you're viewing video or actually playing games. It was a little interesting for me to see that from Apple. I thought they would have cropped the top and bottom with black bars, but Nope, it's literally just obstructing your content. And if you don't want that, definitely go for the larger plus size. Not to mention, these are not comparable. Your content will appear bigger on the Plus series phone just because it has more room to expand width-wise. This one is a very constrained device. Your content will definitely appear smaller than this one, even though there's more room with a taller display. Just something to consider. And then the topic of battery life. So all of them do have pretty good battery life. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have the same as the iPhone 7 Plus, and this guy has two hours better battery life than the iPhone 7. So where does that put it comparing it to the 8 Plus? The iPhone 10 will do an hour or less internet usage time and video playback compared to the iPhone 8 Plus. So not too bad actually. One hour or less for this huge display is not a bad deal. And lastly, price and release date. So the iPhone 10 definitely carries with it a premium over the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, $200 over the iPhone 8 Plus and $300 over the standard iPhone 8. Now considering all that you get for those two $300, it honestly isn't unreasonable. The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 starts at about $930 to $960 depending on which carrier you have and although it does offer a lot the iphone 8 is still in that category and it does some stuff that the galaxy note 8 can even do so definitely not a bad buy although i totally understand why some people would not be willing to dish out more money for it the iphone 8 and 8 plus series definitely do have a lot in common with the iphone 10 but just holding these devices man you can definitely tell this is in a league of its own that display that design it's unlike anything you've ever seen from apple before so personally three hundred dollars in order for me to get this over the standard iphone 8 i will do that any day i just honestly think a device like this 64 gigabyte entry model mm, 
man, they should have done 128. That just seems penny pinching right there for me and 512 top end model. And lastly, release date and ease of access to these devices. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus will be mass produced. They're definitely not a huge departure from the 7 and 7 Plus in terms of design. So it was a lot easier for Apple to make a lot of them. That means they're not gonna sell out as fast and you'll probably be able to get one if you really wanted to. The iPhone 10 though, oh man, this thing will be extremely limited at launch and it's going to be launching a little over a month after this guy. So November 3rd for this street day, September 22nd for these guys. So it will be releasing later. It'll have a smaller supply. That means it'll be harder to get in general. So if you guys definitely wanted to get one, the 8 and 8 Plus series would be easier. Just another reason to go for one of those. But the weight will be worth it for this one if you really, really want to. So there it is, guys, the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. They do have a lot of similarities. They do have a lot of difference, but depending on what you're looking for from these devices, it's definitely your choice. I'm choosing the iPhone 10 any day over these guys. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made your decision just a little bit easier deciding between them. Peace.